Harper is safe. He is uh, he is not coming down this year. He was going to bring down with him uh, Mr. Joey Tanner and uh, the 111 car, and uh, something just kind of it all fell through. It all kind of fell through. Days. Yeah. <laughs> so both Walters oh. and Tanner are not coming down. Well, that's no good. I, I actually I like racing with Joey and uh, and Greg and Casey and all them guys. We just like to give them a hard time because. I think, I think the the Oregon and California rivalry is pretty good, and dude, it's and awesome. I think for the most part, we're all friends, and and uh, so we get to give each other a lot of a lot of crap and talk a lot of smack between us. So it's pretty fun. Well, I can't confirm who is coming with late models down there that we know of for sure, and it's only two, but we can confirm that Bryson James is rolling down along with Jeremy Shank. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. See, that's <clears throat> that's. Two good cars. That's, that's not good for us, but it's good for, it's good for the fans. Well, it's good for your liver because, uh, I mean, because, you know, we're announcing, of course, and so we well, won't spend. Which could you know, be bad for his liver. We won't. I'm just going to say we won't spend, you know, only we'll only probably only spend six hours after the race with you uh, because we know that you will have uh, the disco lights. Uh, and a couple poles set up after the races. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm just saying, uh, last time that I uh, went to a race with you was down in Merced, and uh, I will not come to your trailer after the races anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I do not remember going to. Well, An- I do not remember going to Antioch the next night. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's not entirely my fault. It, but, well, uh, it, it it wasn't either. Uh, <laughs> so let me ask you, Clay. Have no, you guys already started priming the pump? What's that? Have you guys already started priming the pump a little bit for this weekend? I mean, you know. Oh, no. Not yet? Oh, no. We just uh, we just uh, got back from the shop, uh, getting the modified tour down for Vegas, getting it uh, ready to get cleaned up and uh, get a couple things uh, uh, fine-tuned and and uh, get a new – get a fresh dress on her and, <clears throat> and uh, get it ready for the duel in the desert. So Well, now last now year – uh, Go ahead. Long, long hours, you know, all the time is pretty much how we roll. We were talking about that earlier in the show, you and your long hours. Uh, last year, you were probably the busiest driver at the Budweiser Nationals. Cause I think you ran three of the six divisions both nights, correct? Yeah. Are you doing that again this year? Uh, we're going to go for four of oh the my six God. this year. Are you oh, serious? Wow. Really? That's the plan right now. <laughs> oh, my God. No, so, so you're going to run the late model, the mod, and then you're going to run, is it the 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 sport mod or is the pro stock? Well, we're going to we're gonna run the pro stock and the late model for sure. Okay. Um, I'm working on the mod deal, and uh, I'm uh, I'm about to uh, sit in the hobby stock and see if I fit in it because I think I think I'm going to try to try my hand at hobby stocks. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, we said That's your name a be, lot last year. That is going to be outstanding to see you in a hobby stock, dude. It's going to be something way out of way out Man. of the league I've ever seen you in. But I'm telling you right now, those car. Well, we we've been watching old, you know, the last couple of years on YouTube. You yeah, the old the videos. Nationals. And those hobby stocks, they 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 get on, man. Dude, I've I mean, seen I've seen hobby stocks going into turn three and packing the left front tire, dude, a oh, foot dude, off the ground. Those guys, three, four wide, banging doors. Holy let's get it crap, on. dude! Those guys. Let's play daily type racing. Let's get right? it on. Let's find out who's got some sack. <laughs> well, I think I mean, you know, every every uh, every division out there, you know, puts on a great show about nationals. It doesn't matter what division it is. It it's doesn't true. matter. You know, if it's a B main, a, a heat race, um, a main event, it doesn't matter what it is. Blood Nationals is just a great show. There's every every division has, uh, you know, the best drivers around from from their respective divisions, and uh, you know, the racetrack's always awesome, and, and Schweitzers do a hell of a job getting uh, all those races ran. You know, without making it go too late, and and keeping the track together, and and typically always smooth and you know what you're going to get. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of fun to be a part of all the divisions because you get to race with a different crowd and, 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 uh, and you know that you're racing against a guy that you, that might look up to you, you know, uh, racing a late model or a modified or whatever. But at the same time, you know, you look up to that guy because that guy really wins a lot of races in a hobby stock and, and, you know, gets after it. So, you know, there's going to be guys that I've never raced against before, but I've always watched and been like, wow, that guy's, you know, pretty awesome, you know. So, so we, that's pretty cool. So we were talking. You'd say something like that. Now, 
of all those cars you're in, what is your favorite type of race car to drive? Uh, late model has probably got the got the top spot. You know, come on, you don't have to sugarcoat it. Okay, that uh, hobby stock, the hobby stock is the best. What's that? I said you don't have to sugarcoat it. We all know the hobby stock is your best. It might be. You know, (laughs) I might really like it. I might have to end up building one. But (laughs) as of right now, as of right now, I really like the late model stuff. You know, the speed and and the feel of the race cars is is something that's you know it's not matched in any other division and and i really like i really like running it um but you know a close second is that street stock it's a lot of fun the racers in that division are are a ton of fun as well and um you know you just race hard and you get after it so so um we're... you know but the same thing you know the mod deal is the same thing and and i'm sure the hobby stock's the same way too so you know we'll see uh we'll see what we'll see what takes place so we were talking to Schweitzer earlier in the broadcast and stuff at the at the opening hour of our show, and we were talking about you know uh, what what he does prep wise, um, you know for you know for the track, you know from the regular season to the ba- you know to the Bud Nationals. He said there really isn't much. He says, you know, the only difference is stuff is that that's the reason on the second night it goes from a heavy track to a very dry slick track is because they just don't have that prep time now. Going into the Bud Nationals, and, and you've been down there multiple, multiple times knowing this, how much changes do you do, especially now you're, you're going to try for four different cars, does it affect your driving style from going from a street stock to a late model, from a heavy track to a dry slick on the second night? Well, real quick, let's just talk about the late model. How much change from the late model on night one to night two? Well, you know, by the end of night, by the end of night one, you're pretty much where you want to qualify on night two. And, uh, and then you just, you know, you just kind of let the racetrack clean off and, <clears throat> and adjust your drive and the rest of the night, you know, I mean, at least that's what we do, you know, right, wrong or different. It's to me, it seems like you, the, by the time the end of the first night rolls around, you're, you're where you want to pretty well start for, for night two. And, and then, um, you know, and in the other divisions, it's a little bit different, you know, I don't know what kind of changes we do in the street stock, um. I have no idea. Um, I'm usually <laughs> in, the, in another car running a running a heat race or a feature. When those guys are making the changes, they just you know they just know what to do based on what they saw. So you know I don't know what you do on a hobby stock either. You know, um, but I know with the mod, it's kind of it's kind of opposite. You know, a mod I I like to go back to baseline every every day. You know, the start of a you know new day is 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 back to baseline, and then. You know, we just watch a racetrack and go from there. But uh, the late model deal is so qualifying dependent that you got to make sure that you kind of yes. If you ended up if you fared well at the end of the first night, you need to be somewhere close to that uh, for qualifying the second day. The way the racetrack is, because you need to be in the top six to uh, not yeah. make the night difficult on yourself. Night number two. So we're talking about four different cars, and we're. Basically, we're talking about four different driving styles. You're talking about a high horsepower, you know, fully, you know, suspension late model compared to a street stock. Going in because, I mean, you've had a ton, a ton of driving experience in multiple, multiple avenues at different cars. What can you take away from the street stock that you can apply to the late model and or vice versa? You're talking to Clay Daly. He drives every car the same. <laughs> I, I, ha- I have seen well, that. But, I mean, you know, for, for an average listener and stuff that doesn't understand the difference between a late model compared to, you know, I mean, of course, a slower, um, a stock. little bit heavier street stock, what is the difference as a driver going in? And, I mean, this is going to be, you know, we're talking about how the night is just boom, 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 boom. I mean, it, it, there is no stopping. None. How is that going to affect, one, your driving style um, trying to drive four cars? Well, you know, I've I've never really tried to put too much thought into it. I've uh, I've always kind of just figured we'll uh, we'll strap in and and uh, scrub her around under yellow and go from there and uh, try not to put too much thought into it. You know, race car drivers are not the smartest form of people, so <laughs> we, don't, we try not to think too much. Yeah, you know, you you have yeah, pretty much played <laughs> nailed it right on the head right there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Twisted Motorsports. What is new with Twisted Motorsports? I heard one of our fellow Northwesterners, uh, name of Jenner, is actually uh, coming down there and working with you. Yeah, um, he's been in the shop working for me, and um, he's he's getting the car of his own here. Um, it's actually 
on the truck um, headed back here so we can finish weld it and get everything uh, done up, and then we will send it off to Powder Coat and get it ready. Uh, admits getting a show car ready and getting um, two other cars that are headed to Oregon, actually. Um, they're just they're just waiting to get picked up right now, and then we have another car that's going, uh, down south of Santa Maria that's uh, – that's getting ready to go to powder coat and um, hopefully another one um, soon after that uh, we're, we're pretty stacked up right now, but we got, we got one order that come in over the weekend and um, one order that might come in over the course of this next weekend. So I want to know who bought cars, those cars you know, in Oregon. as fast as we can and, you know, and, and learning more and more things and going fast, you know, and, and just trying to, trying to make customers happy and trying to make them, go as fast as they possibly can. So can you send out a press release as right now on Northwest Dirt News on who the two Oregon buyers are on your cars? Uh, Donald Banfield and Andy Freeman. Okay. Southern Oregon right, guys. Yeah, absolutely. So those Evos that you guys are you know producing down there, they're finding a lot of success there in the California area. Yeah, right now, um, you know, we just, uh, just got to get more and more out there. Um, they're really good, but they're – they're they're not really known for a lot of guys you know they they see it but they don't they don't look into it much you know i don't think that there's a lot of people out there that are taking us serious as car builders and um with the performances that the sport mods and a mods have had this year i think uh i think here pretty soon they're gonna have a hard time not paying attention to us and not not giving us a fair shake at, at uh at uh, building the car you know for for uh some guys but you know, the the more I think about it, the more I say, you know, if you if you want, you know, cutting edge technology and you want, you know, the best help out there, you're going to have to buy one. You're going to have to get one. And if you want, you know, something that you can't get all the help you could ever wish for and you can't get the customer service and uh, and you can't get quite the technology that, you know, that you want, there's a lot of guys out there that really, <clears throat> they really, uh, they really look into this this whole, you know, up to date thing and looking at NASCAR technology, you know, all the brake systems and all the uh, front end geometry and everything else. And there's some people out there that enjoy that. And those are the people that are contacting us. Those are the people that want to, you know, pursue um, with, uh, with what we do. And, 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 you know, realistically, that's where we are. We're, we're at the point where we want to entertain those people and, when the time comes to where we're getting flooded with orders from people that don't care about the technology, that don't care about this or that, they just want a car and they want to go race it, and it doesn't matter what service that we provide for them, you know, we'll take that business as well and, and we'll do our best with it. But, you know, as of now, <clears throat> we're really we're really finding our niche as far as uh, building cars for the people that are really into the dynamics of, of how the race car works. Well, you know, you're talking about um, just the Clay Daly in, in a person is that when here, you know, a few years ago, uh, the beginning of the season, you know, myself, Kenny Miller, we brought down a rookie uh, and Chris Ray, you know, and his modified. And I came up to you and I said, hey, Clay, man, this is what I have. This is what I'm, you know, trying to achieve. Um, you know, you know Kenny Miller as well as a lot of California guys do. You, you guys have the same driving style. You guys are very aggressive. You guys are very, very fast. And you know, only talking to you on the phone and you know, back and forth, you know, Facebook wise, and then actually talking to you, talking to you. I will tell you right now, you know, for the race fans that are listening, Clay Daly is a thousand percent the guy that if you have a question, no bullshit. I'm sorry, my French. <laughs> he will give you a no bullshit answer, and he'll sit there and say, "Look, this is works." And if you sit there and if you use it, great. But if you go talk to somebody else, do not go back to Clay and say, well, you know, he right, said, right. because this is what Clay will say. Well, you know what? I appreciate you coming over, but you know what? I know my stuff works, and if you right. ask for my opinion, that's it. That is the reason why you are so successful is because you've driven so many things that if people don't understand that and, and, and don't go well, to how? him and, and, and look for the resources and stuff that he does give out because it's 100% legit. Right. He's not going to bullshit you around. That's the thing with Clay. That's one thing that people appreciate about you and, and Twisted Motorsports is they come to you to, for an answer, they get the answer. You don't hide anything because you can put the best setup on the car with, with anybody in it, and you still got to drive the car to victory lane. I mean, that's and that's kind of how you approach things, right, Clay? 
Well, yeah, you know, when we answer a question, we answer it, we answer it with the truth. 